Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here's your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 6th of September 2025. Heaps to get through in today's weather forecast update. Plenty of rainfall over the last 24 hours in southwest and western Australia. I'll recap on that, plus a big time storm expected offshore from New South Wales. Rainfall and thunderstorms are still holding strong on the forecast models early next week across North Queensland and into Central Australia as well. All the details on these storms plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things for your Saturday morning. Over in the southwest of Western Australia, it's been a soggy 24-hour period once again, and as you can see, a large low-pressure system has moved through the southwest of the state. In fact, it's moved a lot closer, if not actually over the coastline than what we initially thought, which means that rainfall has actually been quite substantially heavier than what we did think it would be, especially for the south coastal region. Northcliffe has 55 millimetres in the rain gauge already, with rainfall beginning to ease off there. Albany is likely to cop a similar rainfall accumulation as well, and as you can see, the low-pressure system now emerges just towards the east of Albany, back offshore uh, over the uh, Indian Ocean here. Uh, and it looks like the rainfall is expected to pipe up once again uh, between Albany across towards Esperance with some strong winds expected throughout the remainder of this morning into early this afternoon. Some cracker thunderstorms into the Perth metro area last night. Plenty of reports of hail and some pretty serious severe weather impacts around the Perth metro area uh, through early uh, yesterday evening between 5 and 7 o'clock from some very intense thunderstorms that blew through there. You can actually see them here on the radar imagery and I just want to show you how intense some of these storms were that blew through. They really, really were quite strong. Uh, rainfall rates here in some of these storms approaching 130, 140 millimetres an hour. They were very, very brief, so we obviously didn't cop 140 millimetres in any uh, certain location, but they some good storms, no shortage of them. I've got 60 millimetres in my rain gauge, which is by far the largest accumulation I've seen out of any weather station into the southwest, but uh, we definitely have copped some pretty heavy showers where I am. Rainfall is expected to ease off throughout the course of today, especially through the Perth metro area. You can see showers are not expected to hang around much longer. They will get progressively weaker throughout the course of today. And whilst rainfall will pipe up between Albany and Esperance in the coming couple of hours with some strong winds expected, rainfall is expected more or less to leave the southwest throughout this afternoon into this evening. It'll return early tomorrow morning though, another weak cold front expected to move through the South Capes and the South Coastal region through tomorrow morning around seven or eight o'clock. And this will make it up into the Perth metro area with a bit of heavier showers and rainfall activity by around 11 o'clock or so. Uh, there's not expected to be an awful lot behind this. A few showers persisting through Sunday night into very early Monday morning, but it looks like rainfall and storm are going to clear out of Western Australia throughout the course of Monday. And you can actually see it's expected to be a uh, reasonably dry and reasonably uh, nice week weather-wise as a strong high pressure ridge builds through Tuesday and Wednesday. That'll keep temperatures actually quite cool. Tuesday and Wednesday could be frost nights across parts of the south uh, coastal regions and just into the wheat belt in general. Not a good thing at this time of the year as we get to the crux of the uh, cropping season. You can see Tuesday and Wednesday both expected to be pretty chilly through parts of the wheat belt, so there will be the chance of frost there. Rain Rainfall isn't expected to return until about Friday when we get this weak cold front pushing through on Saturday and Sunday into the Southwest Land Division. And you can see weak cold front activity is expected here and there after about Friday or Saturday, the 12th or 13th of uh, September respectively. And then a bit of a stronger cold front activity or a bit of a stronger cold front impact could be possible around the 17th or the 18th. There's been some pretty strong forecast model signals on that occurring for the last couple of days, but it doesn't look like that's materialized on this forecast run here. Uh, so that is interesting. Definitely change of season type stuff. And just before we leave Western Australia, we'd just like to say much later on into the uh, later parts of September, we're looking at warm weather across the northern parts of Western Australia, as you would expect at this time of the year. The Eastman Wave now calling for 41, even 42 in places here outside of Broome on Friday the 19th of September. Typical weather for this time of the year, but we're definitely expecting conditions to begin to warm up across the Kimberley, and that will also go for the Pilbara as well. Marble Bar atop of 38, Newman atop of 35. It even looks like around De Grey or Paru here we could be looking at temperatures pushing close to 40 degrees in spots. So temperatures are going to start to climb across the northern parts of Western Australia, and it won't be long until that heat arrives in the south of WA as well. Let's leave Western Australia behind though and talk about some more stormy conditions. We've got a strong low pressure system that's expected to develop offshore from New South Wales, but there's, a, there's an awful lot that happens before that. For one, we're expecting thunderstorms to be pulled in towards the Northern Territory, New South Wales, Queensland, and South Australia from Sunday night into Monday. Uh, and have a look at this. We are expecting a weak cold front to move through, which will bring the chance of some thunderstorms into the Western part of New South Wales tomorrow afternoon and evening, with a chance of a few severe thunderstorms towards the West of Cobar and Griffith. We're not expecting anything 
anything too crazy or anything too widespread, but it will be those change of season isolated thunderstorms that we're used to seeing at this time of the year. A bit of rainfall also expected to move in towards Victoria and the northwest of Tasmania. You can see a couple of showers and thunderstorms possible into the interior parts of the Northern Territory as well. Not much expected into Queensland or South Australia, but it will be Monday night. That's much more significant with some very warm temperatures expected to develop right out of the gate on Monday morning. We're expecting a very healthy thunderstorm outbreak to develop across interior parts of the Northern Territory, the northeastern corner of South Australia, southwestern Queensland, and the northwestern corner of New South Wales in this big line here. Under the influence of a low pressure trough that's going to get itself set up over the top of Lake Eyre by the looks of things. And you can see uh, from the temperature observations here, think at 35, Bedoria at 36, there, and uh, Willara out here in the Northern Territory at 38. Very warm uh, day expected on Monday, and there's going to be plenty of energy in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to make the most of. Have a look at this temperature forecasts here, 36, 35, 37 in, in multiple locations. Convective available potential energy values also really healthy around Lake Eyre. So on this northeastern corner of South Australia especially, and through parts of southeastern uh, Northern Territory, around, or definitely uh, towards the southeast of Alice Springs, we're expecting some very healthy severe thunderstorms to fire up through Monday, especially for this time of year. The energy is going to be there, and there will definitely be some very healthy severe thunderstorm activity. Also into the northwestern corner of New South Wales, I imagine to the north of Willacania, White Cliffs and Broken Hill, there will also be some pretty decent severe thunderstorm activity, and this will persist late into Monday night, into early Tuesday morning, with widespread thunderstorms expected to carry over into Tuesday morning through parts of Queensland, the Northern Territory, South Australia and New South Wales and you can actually see thunderstorms look to get a little bit more intense through Tuesday morning in fact as they upscale into a large and powerful school line racing through this part of New South Wales and Queensland. This is a pretty good thunderstorm forecast for September. I don't know if you can tell uh, just thinking back to what we were talking about last year which was in, in itself a very healthy storm season. We didn't have anything like this in early September. This is a very healthy severe thunderstorm forecast and I imagine we are going to get some pretty significant thunderstorms out of it. Some very widespread severe thunderstorms expected, but even more widespread thunderstorm activity is expected. It's basically picked the most remote part of Australia to dominate, so there's not an awful lot of people that are going to be impacted by this, but for Alice Springs, Birdsville, Bedori, Windora, Thargaminda, Moomba, Wanaring, White Cliffs, Tipabura, uh, Wilcania, Broken Hill, all those places, even Lake Eyre, you could be seeing some pretty decent severe thunderstorm activity uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning, and you can see these thunderstorms actually persist into Tuesday night as well. We may see a pretty decent thunderstorm outbreak around Co Bar, Broken Hill and Griffith through Tuesday night as well. Then you can see this low pressure system. This leads me on into the next part of this low pressure system forecast racing across the southern half of New South Wales, moving into the southeast corner of New South Wales and into Victoria and then emerging through Wednesday night into early Thursday morning offshore from the New South Wales coastline somewhere around Jervis Bay or Wollongong and this is where we're expecting this strong storm to materialise from. The forecast models are still very uh, inconsistent with exactly when this storm is going to emerge offshore from New South Wales. So take the time of this forecast I'm about to spit with a pretty heavy pinch of salt. But in terms of location, we're now all expecting, or all major forecast models are expecting this low pressure system in a very weak state to emerge offshore from New South Wales and get itself going very, very quickly. Have a look at the wind forecast from the Eastman Bear forecast. This is quite a bullish forecast model for wind, uh, especially in the case of this here. But have a look at how quickly this weather system intensifies. This is Wednesday morning. You can see there's absolutely nothing going on here offshore from New South Wales, but just in a three or four hour spate here out towards Wednesday evening into Wednesday night. You can see wind gusts already approaching 125 kilometers an hour here in what's going to be a very quickly developing east coast low. And this system only gets stronger through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Have a look at this 155 kilometer an hour wind gusts uh, forecast to occur well offshore from the New South Wales coastline, albeit, but still some very strong winds expected to get it themselves jammed up against the New South Wales coastline. This is Wednesday night into Thursday morning before the system becomes a little bit larger and a little bit weaker as it races towards New Zealand. Zealand. This is a pretty significant severe weather threat for Lord Howe Island and also maybe Norfolk Island as well if it does get large enough and it will be a very significant severe weather threat for New Zealand later on into the week and into next weekend. The low pressure system isn't posing a massive risk to New South Wales at this point in time. Of course when we do have a storm that's presenting these kind of winds in this proximity to the New South Wales coastline, there will definitely be some pretty strong wind gusts around the coastline itself. So I'd say the Illawarra coastline and the southeast coast through Wednesday night into Thursday morning definitely start expecting some pretty strong wind gusts averaging 80 or 90 kilometers an hour with top wind gusts up to 105 or even 110 kilometers an hour. It's nothing that they're not built for and it's nothing unusual for this time of year. We're definitely well and truly into East Coast low season right now but at this point in time the system definitely looks like it could pack a punch even though it's not going to hang around and it's 
not expected to be uh, kind of heading towards the New South Wales coastline, which can actually make all of the difference in a weather system like this. Not to mention strong winds expected across the Victorian high country and also into the New South Wales snow mountains through Tuesday night into Wednesday. We could be seeing blizzard conditions with rainfall and snowfall moving through there, accompanying winds with 125 km an hour gusts. And strong gusty winds also expected through parts of the Illawarra coast, the metro area uh, through Sydney, and then into the higher elevations outside of Sydney and through the northeast of New South Wales, as well into the northern tablelands and even into the northern rivers, and potentially even over into the granite belt and coalfields region of southeastern Queensland. We could be seeing gale force wind gusts develop up there as well. So this is a widespread low pressure system or a widespread event, that's for sure. It's expected to develop classically as well, very much like an East Coast low wood. So I'd be surprised if this doesn't actually get into quite a, uh, a rare category of being a really strong weather system with wind gusts well above that 125 kilometer an hour mark, but it should be strong enough, uh, far enough away from the coastline as to where it's not a significant impact to the New South Wales coastline. That's what we're hoping for right now. But it looks like all the major forecast models, I mean, have a look at the GFS, it's calling for the system to be well off sure uh, by around Wednesday and even as it does intensify you can see it still remains far enough away from the New South Wales coastline as to where it's not really expected to be a concern uh, kind of whatsoever. Most likely to happen Wednesday night into Thursday morning could happen a little bit earlier could happen a little bit later it, it really is kind of a wait and see game from these forecast models here but all major forecast models suggesting a very strong very tight and then eventually a very large low pressure system to develop through Wednesday and Thursday offshore from the New South Wales coastline. This probably isn't a system where panicking about right now, but do expect some severe weather in the southeast coast and the Illawarra forecast districts and also into the higher elevations around New South Wales. If you get severe weather from east coast lows uh, that move away from the New South Wales coastline, you're expecting it this time around. And just briefly up in towards North Queensland, rainfall is a very firm signal on the forecast models and it has been for quite a while now. This weekend is expected to have a few showers embedded within it. You can already see a few showers beginning to develop here in a bit of a train that's moving up in towards Cooktown, north of the Daintree Rainforest. Nothing too crazy, nothing to report about. It's pretty typical weather for this time of year, but have a look at the wind observations out into the Coral Sea. 50 kilometres an hour here at Hamilton Island, 48 at uh, Creel Reef, 48 here down at uh, Gannett Cay. And you can see wind observations around Holmes Reef, Flinders Reef, Arlington Reef, all around that 40 to 45 kilometer an hour mark. Much gustier than what we were talking about yesterday, and winds are a great indicator of what rainfall is to come up in towards far north Queensland. When those winds start blowing out of the southeast, you know showers are imminent. Developing later tonight into early tomorrow morning, we're going to see shower activity throughout the Cassowary Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest. It will ease off through Monday, so it's kind of only a 36 to 48 hour uh, rainfall uh, kind of well, shower outbreak here. I'm really finding words that don't uh, overstate this kind of weather event here because it really is a nothing. Uh, we are still talking about some showers in towards far north Queensland, so it's definitely worth the mention, especially at this time of the year, again, highlighting the change in seasons. Showers will progressively ease off through Monday and they'll properly ease off and clear through Tuesday. And you can see Wednesday, Thursday, Friday expected to remain dry until about Saturday next weekend. We've been talking about the 13th as a date where rainfall is going to pipe up once again for the Casper Coast. And you can see 13th, 14th, that's Saturday and Sunday, more showers expected up there. They ease off a little bit through uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 15th and 16th of September, and you can see showers expected to clear after about the 17th or the 18th of September for a good run of time. But have a look at rainfall accumulations just this weekend. You can see rainfall accumulations Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We could be seeing falls between that 20 to 40 millimeter mark through parts of the Cassowary Coast, isolated falls to 60 millimeters, and very isolated accumulations around Billend and Curran Fishery Falls up around the 80 millimeter mark this weekend out to Monday and Tuesday. And then once again, rainfall accumulations expected to pipe up around the 13th. You can see slightly heavier rainfall is expected then uh, and more widespread accumulations between that 20 to 60 millimetre mark with isolated falls to 100 millimetres expected through the Casper Coast and the Daintree Rainforest. Both times, however, larger population centres such as Cairns and Townsville and even out into the Atherton Tablelands aren't expecting anything very significant in the way of rainfall. In fact, in fact, they're not expecting anything more than a couple of millimetres at this point in time. There will be a few showers through the Sundays as well and I imagine Prospine is probably going to end up seeing about 100 millimetres in the next two or three weeks from the shower activity or the shower activity that does develop here. But again, down to Mackay, we're not talking about anything too crazy in the way of rainfall down there either. And rainfall accumulations on the 14-day forecast really are concentrated to those uh, kind of nooks and crannies in the mountain valleys and rivers, uh, river valleys through the northern Queensland and central Queensland uh, that do typically pick up a lot more rainfall in their surrounding areas. So 
You know if you live in a wetter pocket of the Casper Coast or the Daintree Rainforest, then you're expecting more rainfall this time around. But if you're around Cairns or into the Atherton Tablelands or any further, anywhere further south of about Paluma Dam or Halifax, you're not likely to pick up anything in the way of significant rainfall at all. Uh, and by significant, I mean anything more than about five or 10 millimetres of rainfall. Again, this rainfall is absolutely no concern to far north Queensland. Just thought it was worth a little bit of airtime considering it really does highlight the change in season that, that we are now beginning to see across a wide swathe of northern in Australia. On that note though, that is going to do it for my Sunday morning forecast weather update. I do hope you have found this video enjoyable and informative and if you have then please do let me know in the comment section down below and give me some feedback as well. Leave a like as well, subscribe to the channel and make sure you check out the Facebook page, link in the description. A special shout out of course goes out to the channel sponsors, could not do it without them, their names are all on screen right now and again their support is much appreciated. If you too want to get your name mentioned at this time of the forecast update, then click the join button down below. Uh, big things coming as well for the channel sponsors as well, so great time to get in there uh, whilst it is uh, still a pretty small and exclusive club. But that is all for me today, catch you all the next storm. Goodbye.